afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor Palmieri for having given me, given me the chance to finish uh, the discussion we started with the movie, that, by the way, you can find on YouTube. And so now let's speak about, let's talk about uh, plasmas, atmospheric plasmas. So let's have a, a brief look at outline of this presentation. So we will start with an introduction, brief about LTE and non-LTE plasmas and their classification. So then we will speak about our configuration, so semi-metallic torch with cleaning experiments and results, and then we will speak about improvement and we will have final considerations. So let's start with this graph. This graph represents um, how the temperature of the species created inside the plasma, so uh, ions and electrons, uh, changes and they get together as we increase pressure. So in the in the limit of atmospheric pressure, we have thermodynamical, local thermodynamic equilibrium plasma, so LTE plasmas, while being in vacuum, we obtain non-local thermodynamical equilibrium. What we are uh, developing, it's a system of atmospheric plasma, so we will, we will work in this, in this range, more or less. Here we can find some obvious characteristics, so temperature, density of the electrons, and so on. So let's have a kind of, dis let's say, distinguish between a kind of plasma that we can create in atmospheric pressure, uh, differentiated by um, ignition power supply, let's say. Here we can find industrial sources, so like, uh, for example, for the CN low frequency, arc torch, corona, and DBD, while in laboratories, TL still are developing uh, microplasmas. If we go on, so if we pass to RF, RF waves, we can find ECP and EST, like industrial, and APG, cold plasma torch, hollow cathode, and microplasmas. While if we arrive in our interest region, so microwave discharge, we can find different kind of torches, and we pointed out our attention mostly on MPT torches, so they are microwave plasma torch. In particular, in particular we developed um, a kind of system that is called semi metallic plasma torch. And here we can have a brief uh, representation of our system. So here is the microwave incoming from our magnetron. And this is the waveguide, of course, that is guiding our power to the point, the place where we want to ignite our plasma. So we need a, a tube that is better to be quartz tube because quartz has the best characteristic that we need. So. Uh, we use it to confine our plasma gas and to confine the plasma that can get out from the from our tube. Of course, movable short circuit, short circuit, uh, we used in the beginning, but then we fixed the dimension of our, let's say, uh, our waveguide, and so we we cut it just in the end. Um, so this is a general structure of our plasma torch. So we can see that. Of course, to build this kind of devices, we need microwave source power, so amplified and generator. So the magnetron tube, that is uh, the main device, that no, is the device really that produces microwaves. Then we need some, some equipment needed to protect circulator because circulator protect magnetron from reflected powers. Then, um, a, a, let's say, um, directional coupler power meter, so we can measure the forward and the reflected power, so we can fix the, the maximum values of our field, and three-step tuner, in, indeed, that we need to, to fix the position of the maximum. So here the waveguide, and here is our tube and the plasma. So we build the system in this way, and to improve the uh, characteristic and the stability and the uh, properties of our plasma, we, we had to work on three rules, fundamental rules, especially for plasma, atmospheric plasma, uh, that are times, turbulence, and temperature. Times because we need to have plasma that is stable for a long time in order to be able to have uh, long treatment and stable treatment. Turbulence because we discovered that if we use the right turbulence, we can confine plasma inside the tube so we can avoid an unwanted melting of the tube that we are using to confine plasma. And then, of course, temperature that is what characterizes uh, the properties of the plasma, of course. So using and working on turbulence, we improved our plasma flame. 
here is a picture of our plasma frames. This is more or less 15 centimeter long. As we can see, the tube, the flame. And we were using, in this case, compressed air. So, because, so in this case, we can have cheap cost because we don't need to use uh, particular gas. Of course, we can use different kind of gases like helium, nitrogen, or argon. But compressed air for experiment and for trials, it's good enough and it's cheap enough. Um, so we started with the experimental about our cleaning uh, properties of this flame. So we took some alumina tube. That, as we can see, it's, it was pretty much metallized. And making this treatment, uh, we placed a tube on a rotating, uh, another rotating tube, let's say, and treating the surface, we obtained a pretty good uh, removal uh, effect of the plasma. The good thing is that just to obtain this kind of effect, we just needed to treat uh, our tube for less than five minutes. So it was pretty effective. So, um, so we went on with our trials. And why we were working for an experiment of neutral, um, nuclear physics called Quare, that, is, um, that has the aim to find, and we hope they will, uh, the neutrino mass, um, we, we thought that we can um, improve and understand better our uh, properties of cleaning of our device by treating some samples. For example, in green, the green line refers to um, the limit of contamination that for the, ex the, the experiment quarry we need in, in copper samples, for example. In the red line, there is a sample that show a huge peak of contamination of polonium 210. So we treated this sample with our torch, and the result was that we obtained the, 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 the black line. So the peak is totally disappeared, and no other um, contamination is in, introduced in our sample. So this could be a good device to clean um, the surface of this kind of treatment, of this kind of uh, samples, let's say. Um, of course, we are speaking about radioactive uh, um, elements. So this was a, um, an ana an a spectrum analysis of alpha decay uh, of different kind of uh, elements especially thorium and uranium and all the elements present in, in the chain. But in any case, in any range of energy, no uh, contamination was added by our torch. So, but even after these good results, we were not completely satisfied. So we thought about some new improvements of our system. Um, first of all, uh, the enhancement of uh, ionized species, um, the elongation, more elongation of the flame, and um, um, so, so let's start with enhancement of the species. So we, we thought that we could add some water, uh, water wave vapor inside the flux in order to, to be able to ionize water particles and to obtain more species like O plus and O plus plus that are the most relevant species in, in surface treatment, let's say. So we built this kind of device. It's made by simple glass. So we had the air inlet coming inside from here and the vapor coming inside. And we used uh, alumina capillary here to bring the vapor without condensing where we wanted, uh, as close as possible of the flame, the plasma. And we create also here a narrowing because we needed to, this to be stable and not moving, of course, while processing. So this is our system. You can see here what we built, our waveguide and the tube. And the result was the following. In this movie, we can see it should be a movie. Okay, okay it is not a movie. Okay, I will explain by words. Let's say. Ah, the movie is in my laptop, really. So <laughs> it's hard to find. But in any case. Uh, uh, I don't. I I thought it was. No, but it was okay. In any case, uh, no. Maybe I will show you later <laughs> if we have time. Uh, no, it's in my laptop. In any case, yeah. Here uh, we can barely see here some uh, water drops because in this movie, what what I wanted to show, it was that we have the plasma flame 
and the water coming in uh, following turbulence path of the, the vortex in, in the border, let's say. Um, unfortunately, with, with vapor, the, the elongation of the flame is much lower. In fact, you can see that it even come out, even don't come out of, of the tube. But uh, we are hoping, I mean, we, we hope for well for this. Okay, let's go on. So in fact, we have some instability created by the vapor. And the cause that we thought can create those, this problem is that water drop can create negative charges, so uh, steal, let's say, electrons from the, the plasma, so turn it off. And, or lying in the bottom surface of the tube inside of the water can steal microwave power for the, from the plasma, and so they can turn off the plasma after, after a while. We have to still to improve this. Then we focused on elongating the flame, so we built these two cutoffs. Uh, in order to be able to have longer flame. And the, the main advantage that is that we found that we can still remove more or less all the quartz tube, even till here, and in any case to have a flame that was coming outside from the tube. Uh, in fact, as we can see, this is a comparison between the flame created with the cutoffs and the flame created without cutoff. As we can see, we have a huge elongation here the tube was here, the same picture is taken in the same position, so it's pretty much comfortable. Last, last improvement that we thought, it was that after these results of um, etching, of surface cleaning of our t torch, uh, we thought that we can apply this torch to the treatment of inside surface of uh, cavities. So the problem was to bend the plasma. So we thought that we can add at the end of the cutoffs, this kind of banded um, just glass tube. It, it is a, a Pyrex a glass. And maybe we could obtain something, something uh, that was good. In fact, as we can see, here we are, the flame that is banded in the tube and is coming out from the tube. So we had an elongation and a bending of our uh, flame. So this suggests that we can really have probably this configuration in which we use the tube to treat the inside surface of our cavity uh, to clean it from this is a representation of one gigahertz cavity. Okay, so this is the end, I suppose. And, and so we show this ultra cleaning is possible enhancement is possible, we still have to investigate, and we hope that we can treat cavities from inside. Okay. <laughs>